So when did we last do this? March 21st. Okay, my pledge from this episode on, um, we are busy, and but once a month isn't cutting it, because I'm watching some really excellent films here that I need to share with, not you, with the world. <laughs> Well, sometimes, sometimes you, you like to share them with me. You give me great recommendations. Yeah, which you never take. I, I well, this week I have one that I, we could talk about and that you gave me. That I gave you as a recommendation. Yeah, you said you you should check out this movie. I think you like it. There is a god. Oh, I, I, never mind. I'm getting ahead of myself. I have no idea what you're about to tell me. I could have recommended, I don't know, Sallow again. No, no, I, I, <laughs> I wouldn't watch. <laughs> I definitely would have watched it that again. Um, but I think the last time we did our top five. So this is just, I, we sh I mean, here's your assignment. And this is because I don't want to do it. This is, it's a really boring assignment. Okay. I want you to go back and count the number of episodes that we can call. What are we watching lately? And then this will be, what are we, what have we been watching lately? What are we watching lately? Number, I don't know, 76 or something. Since okay. we changed the format right. into, you know, not just one episode, but just what have we seen lately? Yeah, yeah, that should be easy. Yeah, because so, I want to sort of name the podcast from now on because I know we're having guests on and we're doing different formats and stuff. Um, we're talking about doing dinner and a movie again, you know, yeah. so dinner and movie number two. So yeah, this is this is the this is like the seventy sixth version of what have we seen lately? I like that better. Okay, yeah, I, I, <laughs> this is here, called here. writing on your feet. Here, here, I I, I agree. Um, we'll, we'll we'll get the right number next week. Yeah, the intention is to share what filmmakers that are actually working on films and active in the film business, what they have time to see when they sit down and watch things. Um, one of us being a filmmaker. Um, yeah, it's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a prick involved. Yeah, there's one prick. Definitely a prick. Um, so I, I don't want to start off with Virus from 1999 starring Jamie Lee Curtis, but... Okay, let's go there. <laughs> have you let's, seen it? No, I haven't. That's, that's the, the, the two things, 1999 virus and, the, well, that's three. Jamie right, Lee Curtis. I'm on this kick lately um, where I'm, I've am i always I've always had kicks on years, but for some reason, 1999 is really sticking in my craw right now. So I went to uh, Wikipedia has this great function where you can, it has all the major releases in order from January to December for any year. And so I clicked 1999 recently and I just started watching things from 1999. Um, there's th there's a book about 1999 being one of the best the best last great years in movies. Have you read this book? Uh, what's the what's Have you read a book? Yeah, I have read a book besides so the Andy Kaufman book. What's the title of this this film? What it's not a film, it's a book. I mean the book. Yeah, whatever. Are you listening? Yeah, I am listening. <laughs> Talking to myself here. What was the name of the book? Maybe I have. I'm gonna have to Google it. Well, I, I read obviously, it. it didn't give me shit. Well, it, yeah, come on, it's a movie. It, I read so many books, especially books about movies. You can't expect me to remember what everyone is. Yeah, well, you expect me to remember every movie I've seen. So I'm holding you well, up. Well, that to I the, can do. The, the, the high standard here for our listeners. That I can do. Um, yeah, so as I Google this, tell me what the, the, the year 1999 uh, means to you, Andy. Well, I mean, it was the end of a millennium, first off, so it's one of those banner years, or bookend years. Okay, good. I found it, so you don't have to talk. <laughs> awesome. I only had like one or two more sentences. <laughs> it was right before the millennium. Did I say Y2K? <laughs> it was a big deal. Um, it's called Best Movie Year Ever, How 1999 Blew Up the Big Screen. Uh, it's by, by Brian Raftery. Um, Sorry to make you look it up, but I haven't read it. No, it's I knew you didn't read it. Don't worry about it. But you're talking about a year that that uh, the Phantom Menace came out. You know, the Return to Star Wars, Magnolia, The Green Mile, uh, American Beauty, Fight Club, uh, Virgin Suicides, Talented Mr. Ripley, um, Andy's personal favorite, Bicentennial Man. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've never watched it. You've never seen Bicentennial Man? No, I haven't. It's I would ne I would never say vintage Robin Williams, but it's one where the budgets just got out of control. Really? He's really is it a he's, comedy? He's kind of funny in it. No, it's just like a sad comedy about a a, ro a Robin Williams is a robot and he can't die, so he 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 tries to save his girlfriend by inventing organs that make her immortal. Wow. Okay. And, and but it's a family comedy because he starts out as a personal service robot for this family, and then they all start dying. I mean, it's really it's a really sad movie. Yeah. You should watch. It's like two and a half hours long too. I, I don't feel like. I mean, if you're a robot, if you just pull out some wires, I figure that's how you you die. It's long. Let me tell you, it's long. Okay. But you also had The Insider. Um. Yeah. Eyes Wide Shut. Ooh. Kubrick's last movie came out in 1999. So it's a pretty pivotal pivotal year. And if it was the last great year, I mean, some would argue what 2007. Was I think our friend filmmaker Jager Moore would argue uh, 2007 yeah. was a was the last great year in movies. What what was that? What was the biggest movie that year? Um, I mean, 
from like the film community, you would say like there will be blood. Oh yeah, hands down. You know, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I fucking love that movie. <laughs> Even the Paul Dano, huh? I, I he's the only movie where I could tolerate him. He's the only movie. That is the only movie I could tolerate him in. English motherfucker. I'm trying. I'm trying real hard. It's been a while since we did one. So. I mean, I, I, I'm building it up. So I don't want to talk about virus. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Okay, I, but I, I, it, it has a really nice meta score. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, Jamie Lee Curtis from Not. basically said that that's the worst piece of shit movie that ever was made, and she stars in it. So I have to first say that it's definitely not because it's it's kind of fun and it's kind of terrible in that fun way. And I think that you'd get a kick out of it if you watched it in the right mindset. But I know you'd watch, you'd still watch it and go, no, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. I, it looks like it's like Jamie Lee Curtis's Aliens. It kind of is. Yeah, it's like Alien, but on a boat and she's a scientist. Yeah, it's kind of like that. But then Donna Sutherland's in it and he's always awesome. But then they, yeah. they turn him into a cyborg and wow. I mean, as one, you know, as you should. Let me just tell you, that's that's <laughs> the highlight of the entire piece. That, that is, could be a fun watch, though. You know. Yeah, I mean, you don't hate watch it, but when you're done, you hate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. It's so so. I think she just hated the director. But anyway, um, 1999. I'm going through all of those, so don't be surprised if I throw some gems out there that I haven't seen. Okay. Are there any new movies that we want to start? I want to start with new movies that we have seen that um, are either in theaters or streaming that you've seen lately that you want to talk about? Um, well, there's there's two, um, and they came out within like the last you know month or month or so. Um, either uh, Children of the Corn or Knock at the Cabin. Children of the Corn, the remake. Yes, the remake. I have. I find it disturbing that I have to remind you that Children of the Corn is a remake, and you didn't point that out first because the original was directed by whom? Um, you know, come on, man. It, dude. No, but, I don't even start no, typing. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't remember at this moment. You couldn't even guess. Uh, fucking no, no. I'm not oh. even gonna. I'm not gonna embarrass myself. Okay, if you. <laughs> Uh, it's probably it's probably uh, somebody I w I should know. Yeah, I'm I'm just fucking with you. I have no idea who it is. It's Fr it's Fritz uh, Fritz Kirsch. Oh, one so, of my favorites. Yeah, I'm, of course. I'm killing myself um, knowing this. And looking at his uh, his credits, I mean, I don't know anything else he's done either. So I just like messing with you. Oh well, thank you. I appreciate it. It's fun. But Children of the Corn, the uh, the '84 version, it was uh it was like a mythic film for when we were children because I mean I guess there's that scene. I, or there's a kid without a tongue and they cut off his tongue. Yeah, the, there's a lot of gore in the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you, I'm talking about the original. Yeah, the 1984 one. Yeah. yeah. So that one's just the, the mythos of it scared me enough to stay away from it, you know, when I was of age to watch those things. And admittedly, you know, I'm not the biggest horror guy uh, anyway. Oh, funnily enough, I have a good uh, psychological horror movie for you this week. Do you? Okay. Um, but yeah, tell me your impressions of the new children. I can't wait to start with Children of the Corn, the remake. What are we? Are we serious? We started with M Night Shyamalan. We, that was the other. Now let's go Children of the Corn. <laughs> okay, for sure. Um, <laughs> I don't shit on two filmmakers this week. So in this one, it, it, it loosely follows the same story instead. Um, instead of Mordecai, the you know the creepy little kid from the 1984 one. Are they going to say Mordecai, the the uh, the hawk from the Royal Tenenbaums? I, I love the name. Um, she it's uh, Ellen Camphoris. She plays Bolin Williams. So she's like the she's the one that gets kind of possessed or the the you know the walker um, that lives in the corn, the, the demonic. Spirit. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Just pretend like I've never seen the original. And I I I know the movie's called Children of the Corn. So so there's children in corn. Yeah. So it's a small town in rural Nebraska. Okay. Oh, this I feel like this could have been the sequel to Field of Dreams. If, if Field of Dreams turned out bad. It's what happened to the girl, the little girl from Field of Dreams. And uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so it's about a small town in Nebraska, and there's this spirit in the corn. It's a big corn town, spirit of course. In the corn. Um, that starts talking to the little children. Um, and then this one ringleader girl named Bolin Williams, she recruits all the other children in town, and they start going off on a murdering rampage of all the adults uh, because the spirit doesn't like adults because the adults like kill the corn, chop it down. And <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're mean to the corn. Mean to the corn. They're and mean to the, the corn. Innocence of a child. And there was like some story. Like they gave more story of it. This this one, like some kid went into the corn and the corn took care of it. So now there's a pact between the kids and the corn. It's, there's got to be a movie where like um, even like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, they turn into cocoons and then come out as uh, like clones of people. Yeah, well, yeah. kind of like that or no? 
The uh, corn's alive. Yeah, the corn. This one has more. I mean, because it was made, you know, well, it was made in 2020, but got a delayed release until. Um, I wonder why. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just the fact that you're talking to me about killer corn and this movie. Well, the kids kill the, kill people. It's not the corn. It's the, it's children killing the adults of the town. That's what was so scary about like, yeah, these, you know, if you're a kid, you can just, you know, band together. But is this scary? The new one? Yeah, this one's more instead of like intense, like kids being mean and cruel. This one, of course it had it, but this one had a little bit more of the spirit uh the demonic spirit element to it more if that makes sense no it doesn't like you actually in this one you see what the the walker looks like you know because they have cgi now right they couldn't, uh, they couldn't do it before so it, it, it can we just talk about how much cgi is ruining hollywood it is man. it's really getting out of control where nothing even is making the attempt to cover it up that they're doing it I mean they're not filming anything on sound stage besides being on a sound stage with green screen anymore and we talked about it for years. I get it because it's safer, it's cheaper, you know. But it it's taking all of the reality out of every movie I see. And it, it just bums me out because movies just, they don't relate to me at all. I mean, I, that's why I, I watch so many, you would call them retro movies, uh, instead of new movies because you, they actually feel like movies. They actually feel like they could have been a page ripped out of real life. And these new movies, 80% of the ones that I watch there's some element to where I go, God, why did they have to see? You? They're in a building. They couldn't just find a building. I know, right? It's it's it, it. That's the part of movie making and movie magic is creating that world in practical. <sighs> okay, moving on. Uh, <laughs> why? Because I'm getting I'm getting sentimental about film. The one filmmaker you, on this podcast. You called that sentimental. Well, I was start. I was getting there, man. You, you cut off the Oscar. Oh, yeah, speech. okay. It takes a Viagra for your film spirit. <laughs> Maybe by the end of this podcast, you'll have something to show me. <laughs> I just spit all over the microphone. <laughs> well, there you go. Water. Maybe that's starting to work. Yeah. Um, so, Children of the Corn is not scary. It's lots of CG, and what? So, redeemable qualities. Um, be be nice to the filmmaker. No, I am. It's 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 it, because the. The CG of like, yeah, of course, some blood splattering and everybody does that now. But um, oh boy, you know, like if you take that away, it was still shot in you know like a rural town wherever it was, cornfields and things like that. So this one, it just felt it, it felt like the acting was great in it. The kids, the kids act, kid the actors, kids acting was great. I, that, but, that's something that interests but, me. But they they're older, like so they're more like teenagers. In the original, they were like little fucking kids and they were creepy. Yeah, see, that's the thing about the original is they used real kids and they were fucking scary. And there's nothing worse than it's the pet a pet peeve of mine is a bad child actor. I mean, it just ruins the entire film. Yeah, yeah, it's it's true. And so there wasn't anyone that really like stood stood out or anything like that. So that's that's a win. And you know, keeping the idea alive. I mean, that's the thing. It was a, it was a good remake. Though. I think you're, what you're saying is this this movie just had to rise up to the level of don't suck. Right, because it's like there's no way you can touch the original. So just as long as you don't do it badly, you're you're gonna be good. And they didn't do it badly. They didn't do it badly. Okay, see that's all right. I can I can deal with that actually. You know, so it was uh, it was I wasn't mad. I watched it at the uh, end of it because you know I do. I it was until my later years that I saw the original. My scared, later years, scared, my young scared, and vulnerable years, scared shitless of this. You know? Um, yeah. So that's good. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a uh, a ringer on you this podcast because I watched Avatar. The Way of Water. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. And um, famously, I had only seen the first one. And, you know, it, all joking included, I still think the first one was just a ripoff of Fern Gully, the, the Last Rainforest, mm-hmm. um, with better CGI. <laughs> but actually, I think Fern Gully is better, better animated because I think that actually was hand drawn. Right. It takes, like, takes d- time and talent. Like, I no, mean, dis- not that it doesn't take talent. No disrespect to Mr. Cameron, but if he didn't hand draw every single fucking cell in Avatar. Okay, that, that there's something we said about you know animation versus CGI, right? Um, but yeah, I was not you know not not a fan of Avatar. It just I I always just was so shocked it was the biggest movie of all time. I am too. I I don't I still don't get the uh, appeal. And full disclosure, but you've never seen it. I haven't seen it. Well, how can you say that then? Because I just know people would people would always be fucking talking about that. But movie. you haven't seen the movie, so you can't have an opinion. And you also I know box office numbers. I see the I see the sheets. And you also can't say you don't get 
the appeal of it if you haven't seen the movie. That's true. That's true. That's true. But so just stop talking. Stop talking now. Uh, I'll, I'll wait till you're done with Avatar, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll come back. Uh, right. um, Avatar: The Way of Water. The way. Well, you're talking about Avatar. Throw right a now. colon in there. <laughs> It's not Avatar I'm gonna 2. Go, I'm going to go cleanse my colon while the movie plays. And I think you you probably go around town calling it Avatar 2. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I haven't seen Avatar 2 yet. And you notice the eye rolls. Well, no, man. I never do. You just got to keep going forward. <laughs> Knowing you, I know you've never noticed an eye roll. Otherwise, you'd stay <laughs> home all the time. You'd never leave your room. That's right. That's right. Um, this is going to be shocking. I really enjoyed Avatar The Way of Water. Get the fuck out of I here. really All right, did. Tell me, tell me. Okay. I I mean, I liked it better than the original. Wow. And it's when you're watching the movie, you the thing that struck me the most was, oh my, you know, it starts right out with voiceover of everything that happened in the first movie. And then you know, I'm going, oh God, this is the way they're gonna start doing this, you know, they're gonna relive this for everybody, which drives me crazy because if you're going to make a sequel, the biggest problem I have with sequels is act like you shouldn't have to see the first movie. Right. It should be a standalone movie. And the better it is without knowledge of the first movie, the better movie you're going to get. And the audience actually will reward you for that. So, you know, when they're reliving it in this cheesy voiceover way, I'm going, this is going to be the whole movie. It's just going to be another send up of, you know, of a of sequel redoing the first movie. I mean, um, a friend of ours even said that it's basically Avatar, but underwater. That's that's the way of water. And so I, I was going into it thinking that, and the movie starts going along, and suddenly, you know, I'm, I'm liking the characters. It's about the family this time instead of just individuals, you know, um, in this uh, alien planet. And the effects are the effects, you know, they're better this time because the technology's improved. And then this first sequence comes up, where one of the kids gets uh, gets trapped out in the middle of the water, and his his friends leave him for dead. Friends, you call him friend, but <laughs> and this this kind of like shark creature comes up, and he has to escape it, of course, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm watching him going, oh, typical action sequence, you know. And suddenly it clicked in me how genius James Cameron is as a director. He's so fucking good as a director. He creates the suspense that is so hard to get out of a cynic like me in a movie like this, that that one sequence, I turned my head and went, oh my God, he's really, he's getting me with this sequence. I, I'm thrilled. I don't want this kid to die. I don't want him to get eaten. And then this, uh, you know, this, this other creature comes and saves him out of nowhere. And you go, oh, that's supposed to be cheesy, but you're going like, cool. And it was like, I fell back into a movie fan again where cynicism was gone and it was just about being entertained again and yes throughout this three hour plus movie there's tons of cheese and there's tons of cliche and there's eye rolls abound but you know what i liked all of that too because who gives a fuck you don't have to take this too seriously it's just avatar I feel like you're talking about me when you say that. I'm not. I'm. I'm, pre I'm not pretending you were here anymore. <laughs> but that's the thing. It. It might have eight acts in it. It. Um. It might be overblown <laughs> with budget. It might be overhyped. It might be super. Super Avatar on steroids. But I found myself weeping at the end of the movie because some things. Some things happen that are shocking and actually sad. And I cared about the characters in this one. I cared about the family in this one. And it's like he fooled me, but then I re that's I realized I went back and I said to myself again, no, but James Cameron is a brilliant director. And not only that, he's a brilliant screenwriter. He knows how to merge both and to deliver a fantastic joyride of a movie. And he doesn't give a fuck if you're going to say, oh, that was cheesy and corny and this and that. He knows how to make a good popcorn flick, much like people... Describe to me the Marvel universe like that, but this is much better because he is a he is more experienced, and I think he's just a better director and a better screenwriter than the people doing the Marvel movies. And I think they're also really talented and brilliant people doing those movies. But Avatar: Way of Water, I mean, it something clicked in my brain, and I went, I I missed something. I I turned the cynicism too far on. And yes, I do that, and we all do that sometimes. But if you just let down your guard in the right hands of a great director, they're going to 
indirectly prove something to you. And in this case was a really great thrill ride, enjoyable movie that, uh, that everybody, I think that's why it, it's the most popular movie of all time. And probably the first one has a lot of elements of that, which I did not see at the time, but I get it now. I get it because this would be a fun movie to sit in, in a theater with, with a bunch of kids and adults and, you know, kind of the feeling, the electricity of it coming out of it going like, oh my God, that was so incredible. That was just a thrill ride. You know, it was, it was like Scorsese's worst nightmare of, you know, this, they're like theme park rides or it's like a roller coaster, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, I actually even think Spielberg would consider Cameron a brilliant director and this was a good movie. Okay. All right. All right. It was shocking. I'm telling you, it was shocking that, I mean, I remember Jules came out into the room when I was watching it and she was kind of talking over and I was like, no, 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 I, uh, not right now. And she was like, it's Avatar. <laughs> and I went, I know, this is fucked up. <laughs> it yeah. had me. It had me. And I'm not scared to scream it from the mountaintops. And in the great sequel debate, you know, Godfather, Godfather 2. I, of course, Godfather's better. There has never been a sequel that's been better than the original, or rarely. I actually think this is better than the original. All right, all and right. you haven't seen both, you schmuck. <laughs> I watched the first uh, like 30 seconds of this one. Well, now you're going to have to go and watch both of them and uh, report back to me. That's a, that's a, I'll, be, I'll be old by then, man. Even the it's greatest like film cynics in the world need to check their ego, and right, I, will, I, I would debate them to the death. On this one, because it, I would say yes, I you I would say yes, I agree with everything you're saying about the movie, but it was still fun, and it was still really, I mean, just the fact that Cameron can hold us in the palm of his hand and make us beg for more and eat out of it. I mean, he has the power of the action film that I haven't seen since, you know, very controversial again, but like Jerry Bruckheimer, even like a Michael Bay in the 90s. Remember how great like movies like The Rock and yeah. even Armageddon, as cheesy as those are, just they're okay. just fun fucking movies. All right, so that's... that's it's that's kind of like that. All right, all right, all you know, right. I'm, would you put them on Mount Rushmore? Not those two. Would I put this one on Mount Rushmore? No, please. But of action films? I don't know. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I'm, I might give it a try. I, I, I'm... You are so not going to give this a try. I know you. Well, how long is the first one? Is the first one like three hours as well? The first one is almost three hours, I believe. So can I just watch the second one since that one's so good? Okay. If you, you Yes. Watch the second one. And if you like the second one, I'll go, back and, go back and watch the first one. This is the only time in history I'm going to endorse that, wow. by the All way. All right. Th now I will because this is exciting. Switching oh, it up. God. Okay. So that's my big reveal for the week. That's my big, I'm not going to say new movie, but you know. I, I wasn't going to see that in theaters because I didn't want to sit there for three hours and 30 minutes, but I saw Babylon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's true. I figured Me too. If I'm going to see Babylon, I might as well see uh, Avatar. And you know what? I, I think Ava I like Avatar better, even though how do you compare the two? Right. I don't know. How. It's like apples and shitting elephants. <laughs> 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 nice um all right did you, what other uh, new movie did you see uh well the only other like new new movie was uh knock at the cabin oh the end of the Shyamalan movie yeah okay so it's about religion it is and it's, it's um, like the four four horsemen of the apocalypse coming oh i don't know if that ruins anything fuck no no i think i read that okay that that's what it's about it's like the apocalypse is coming and this strange these strange people show up to this cabin and they're like, you got to kill one of your children or you make else. A sacrifice or the, the plagues are going to continue to come and and uh, destroy man or person kind. I mean, it, 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 the idea, his movies always sound very interesting. I really always love his conceits for his movies. Um, in the beginning, you know, it was kind of like he was the ending guy. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, it always had to twist. be the twist. Yeah. And that kind of you know kind of out wars welcome really quickly with that um remember famously getting done with the one where it's in the village i think it's called the village isn't yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. oh man is it is it, yeah fuck you spoilers by the end of the village you realize that they're not from the 17th or 17th century they're right. actually just a commune of people living in modern day and they choose these monster characters to scare the people into staying which, which by the way i thought of when we watched women talking Really? Because at the end, they've realized that, you know, it's kind of... Don't like, wait, uh, you can't spoil women yeah, talking. Uh, yeah, for sure. But you get what I'm saying now. Like, it's like... I mean, that would have been a sweet reveal. Well, it was. They, well, in women talking. Well, they were just not part... 
offline. We'll talk what, about what are, these, what are these strange contraptions coming all over the place playing your monkeys songs? <laughs> 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 That's Women Talking, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, Women Talking was a very interesting movie. And I don't think it was a play. I kept saying the whole time we were watching it because I always been. talk during movies because you have nothing to say. What do you um, mean you're supposed to be watching the movies? Don't man. define my rules of watching cinema with <laughs> with with you. But don't encroach on my viewing. Experience. Do you think I'm sitting there when I'm alone, not talking? Yeah, you're talking to yourself. You're pro- you're having full blown conversations. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I know. You talk to the dogs. So, Children of the Corn. No, what is this? <laughs> Same, same, different. Cabin one. in the Woods. <laughs> Close. Knock at the cabin. Okay, yeah. Knock at the cabin. Uh, did you like Cabin in the Woods? Everybody loves that movie. I, I when, when it gets to the underground layer, it is a little bit over the top, but the beginning of it, I think, is amazing. See, you know, it, it's weird. Movies like that, Cabin in the Woods, um, and I, I always think they're so hard not to compare to, like, Cabin Fever. That was such a defining movie for our generation. And I've never been the biggest fan of it just because I don't like that kind of gross out stuff. And it was really cheesy too at times and stuff. Um, But for some reason, I appreciate the shit out of the movie because it existed and for what it did to the genre. Yeah. It kind of, you know, you gotta, you gotta give Eli Roth credit for making horror popular again. He did. He was one of the big ones of the resurgence or how they call it. Gore. Um, Torture porn. Yeah, that I just really hate that moniker a lot. Yeah. And, you know, all the way through, like, ho- I never saw anything but the first Hostel. But even now looking back in, in that, you know, as much as I say I hated it when I first saw it because it was just so gross and everything, I, I know what it is. I know what it's trying to do. So, again, I appreciate the movie and I appreciate why, you know, Tarantino and Edgar Wright, they like his work because it's fully realized for the audience that yeah. it's made for. Have ha, have you seen uh, the movie Knock Knock by him? Uh, is that the one with Keanu Reeves? Yeah. I have seen that. I watched that maybe yeah. six months ago. Dude, I really like that movie. I, I watched it a few years ago. I, I love like, him, Keanu, the most. And, you know, he's he's totally come around in the public eye. They, everybody used to make fun of his acting so much. And now it's like he's this darling of not only acting but life. So watching Knock Knock, I remember thinking, oh, no, don't make the wrong choice. I like you, Keanu. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, but I kept thinking it was going to get deeper than it was. I was thinking, you know, his wife had put put uh, the girls up to it. You right. know? I kept thinking there was going to be this big twist coming. And it was kind of like, no, no twist. These are just really shitty people. Yeah, they're just psychos. Yeah, and and that's another one I remember getting done with and going, I don't know if I liked that. And now that you mention it's like, yeah, but it's on the edge of my seat the whole yeah, time. It is intense. And I, I you know... It was a little bit of a departure of just, you know, the straight gore and guts. You yeah. Know? Psychological. Well, I want to talk about my movie recommendation that kind of goes into uh, that same genre. And, um, but you need to tell me about um, M. Night Shyamalan's movie. Yeah. So it was, I mean, the the performances were great. Um, they, uh, like, what's the guy's name? I got to pull up the cast list. But uh, um, Jonathan Goff um, from Hamilton fame, he plays um, one of the, two dads with Ben Aldridge and they have this little girl. Wait, who is he in Hamilton? He was the king. Oh, okay, cool. He was, uh, yeah, King George. Um, so, you know, they're just having a good time camping in the woods and then these four strange people come up, which are Dave Batista, Rupert Grant, uh, Kristen Koo, and um, what's the other? Uh, Nikki Amuka Bird. Apologies. Great pronunciation there. Apologies in, in advance. Somewhere um, she's put out a warrant for your arrest. Right. So it's basically it's it's a movie with those six of seven characters in a cabin in the woods. Um, Cool. So, so, you know, this one didn't really have. I mean, I guess the big twist is that's why I said I don't know if I if I ruined it is that, you know, the people don't believe that these people they're like saying you have to, you know, you have to make a sacrifice. You have to make a choice for all mankind. Halfway through the movie, you find out why. And then, you know, it wasn't. It didn't to me. It didn't have like that signature M Night Shyamalan twist at the end. I guess the twist is when you figure out why they're asking them, right? But I thought the apocalypse was coming. Yeah. Well, they they don't they don't know. Well, I could. We know that, but they don't know that. Well, the, the, you start it's in all the marketing materials, but they don't know that the plague. Well, some people are like, there's just bugs, there's tornadoes. You know, <laughs> it reminds me of that scene in Robin Hood Men in Tights when they're like, I I missed the shot. 
is that in the script? And they all pull out the script. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go, Robin gets another shot. <laughs> okay, on IMDb it says avert the, the apocalypse. Okay, so yeah. You're okay. not, yeah, you're not ruining anything. Okay, good. So, uh, I, so it's but just, they don't know it in the movie. Right. They're trying to tell him they don't believe. One of the dads kind of believes that he sees, a, sees something or he has some moment of faith. Um, <laughs> Jeez, to say with disdain, why don't you? And uh, well, no, it wasn't like that. But it's just I'm trying not trying not to spoil it. But yeah, it was uh, by talking. Yeah, this was one of the I you know I was a little disappointed in this one. Not it just was kind of just a blah. Oh wow, blah like hey you know not kind of who done it but who's going to do it in the cabin. And I really do like. <laughs> so it's a sex movie. <laughs> <laughs> you could you could take it that way. That's so weird. I never put that together. A who done it movie? It's like what? Who's having sex? Who's not having sex? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't every like high school movie a you know, who done it film? Yeah. <laughs> Last time you raised my eye. Who done it? Right. Who done it? And like I liked you know a bunch of his movies like uh, Unbreakable that tr- that trilogy. You know, there's a trilogy. Well, it's Unbreakable, Split, and then Glass. They all tie together. Oh yeah, which. What's the difference between Split and Glass again? Uh, Split was uh, James McAvoy when he's the schizophrenic. Isn't Glass with him too? Yeah, but but now oh, the both the worlds of those two movies, Unbreakable with um, with uh, Bruce Willis, he's the one trying to stop. Split's the one where he's in the hospital and we see all the personalities, right? He keeps yeah. He, well, he has his like little dungeon and then he goes to see his therapist. Oh, okay, and then and then the the last one, Glass. That one's when he's. In the hospital, yeah, right, and then he bre- and then he breaks out, and then because uh, what is it, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, he he was the heavy in the Bruce Willis movie. Oh, Break right, I do like those movies, right? So it's- I actually wasn't the biggest fan of Unbreakable, you know. Um, I liked it, but you know, everybody was really raving about it. But I actually like thought the psychology, but behind the other two movies, you know, years later were, was amazing. Yeah. I, I, I do too. And then I like devil people shit on that movie. I thought it was good. Devil. Yeah. Oh, that one. People are trapped in the elevator. That's the whole movie. Yeah. They're trapped in an elevator. Yeah. The visit, the visit. I like the visit and, um, didn't see that one. I didn't, I didn't watch old, um, the one that came out before this. Nah, you but know, I've seen the village signs, you know, so it's, it's, it's fun to watch this. What's movies. the one where, you know, basically like global warming is killing everybody. Oh, no, it's signs. <laughs> No, it's not. Oh, the, that's, that's the happening. The happening. The happening. That's, that's the right. one that's ridiculous. It's basically the wind is coming for everybody, and this family is running away from the wind. And you know, you know, the the wind is coming because they keep cutting to like hay and corn uh, rustling in the wind, and people yeah. are going, "Oh no, the wind's kicking up. We gotta go." That's like children of the corn a little bit. Uh, all right, <laughs> if that helps you, yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm, you know, uh, M. Night Shyamalan, he's a good filmmaker, he's a good storyteller, you know, and, you know, he chambers one up every year, so you're gonna have some swings and misses, you know, you're gonna have sure. some connections, and was it, so this one wasn't a connection for you? It, it just wasn't for me, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to, like, you know, enjoy it, I didn't have, it would, you know, I didn't regret watching it, but I was, I was, my, my expectations were a little, little, under par for so are you it, like so. a horror guy or are you more like a psychological thriller horror guy i like more like the psychological thrillers i think now in my my now older more vulnerable age but like when you were watching slumber party massacre 3 when you were younger that was like your thing yeah right because it's just the most you're, you know this is stuff you shouldn't be watching i, you, know? I you can just say boobs <laughs> oh well that too I, come on i'm talking about the gore i the know killing. you but that was yeah i mean as a as a young adult teenager how young are we talking about Oh, dude, I was, I was thinking like 13 to 15. My therapist, take yeah, a walk. Right, right? yeah. <laughs> like, and of course, you get to see a movie and you get to see... I mean, that sounds so bad. Again, boobs. Loud. I mean, just say it like it's ridiculous. <laughs> when you're you're in, so gross. When things are happening in the human body, kids. I you mean, know? you're only human, I guess, if the jury is going to come know, out now I couldn't g- Now I couldn't give a shit less if there's boobs, no boobs. You know, I just didn't want I just want a good story, goddammit. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Back in my day, movies um, had stories. Yeah. <laughs> Today's episode of the Four Seasons of Film podcast is brought to you by Phil's Coffee. Phil's specializes in handcrafted coffee made one cup at a time. Visit a location today or find them on the web at philscoffee.com. That's phil's with a z, coffee.com. Find the beans you're looking for. I I also saw a good person. A good person? Why do I know that? Why do Um, I know that name? I was on the street and I talked to, to, to just some random stranger and it turned out they were a good person. Not the movie. Okay. That joke was horrible. Okay. Uh, but Pew. it's Zach Braff's new movie. Oh, The Return of Braff, huh? I mean, he's been here for... Don't call it a comeback. 
<laughs> he's been directing for years. Um, nothing to the critical acclaim of, acclaim of Garden State, which, you know, it hit me. That was the year I went to started film school. So yeah. that movie hit me at the right time. You know, it was like the transition from, you know, young adulthood to adulthood. And filmmaking wise, the soundtrack I still listen to. I, oh, I listened yeah. to like two days ago. But you weren't the biggest fan of that movie. You've never really mentioned Garden State, so you must have just been young, dumb, and immature when that came out. Still are. I, I like the soundtrack. That was that's my, that the was, best part of the that movie. Was, that was the best part of the movie for me. I remember just I I I did I got it. You know, it was like all right, cool. This this movie's kind of okay, but melancholic. You a, I think I'm, yes, exactly. But that's that's how you feel when you are of that age. You, you I, I don't in two thousand four. How I, old how old were you in two thousand four? Um, I was six, 16, 17. Get the fuck out of here then. And did you have a girlfriend at the time? I'm going to say yes to look you, cool. You probably I don't remember no, you, if I did. You did. I remember you did. I did not. And I was what eighteen, nineteen. When something, that movie came something out, something like that, and I didn't have a girlfriend, and so if you are young, single, and male at this time, I'm just speaking for myself. In 2004, and you see Garden State, you are melancholic because you want a girl like that in the movie. The humor appeals to you. It's it's all over the place. It works for a generation of people that felt that way. You were this brash asshole 16 year old with a girlfriend who was in band somehow. And maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> and so you didn't get Garden State, but you also didn't get Swingers the first time you tried That's to watch true. it too. So I uh, yeah, yeah, you were like, these guys are full of shit. I'm cooler than them. I thought, I'm, probably that's what it was going on in my head at that See, time. Now, I can't, now if we, I can't I I I if mean, I had video of you acting like you acted when you first said swingers wasn't cool and you were cooler than Vince Vaughn in that movie, the side by side comparison would be viral for how stupid you look. I know, right? Um but that's that shows growth. That shows progress. That shows just the human condition. I think man. it shows embarrassment. I think you look back yeah, on we, it and you go, "We all did stupid shit when we were younger, man." I know, but you did. You acted like a real stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 now, now I'm not. So you dude. used to walk around looking like you did, and you just looked in the mirror and went, "Nailed it." Well, that's what you know. That's an important lesson, kids. Lesson and, number two from Uncle Andy. And usually, what you do as a sixteen-year-old is you walk around and go, oh, "I feel insecure because I'm so awkward looking, and I don't know if I'm cool." And you're just like, "Fuck that! I know I'm cool." <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So it doesn't sh it doesn't shock me that you didn't dig Garden State because that was I won't even say the word that was wimpy. That was wimpy <laughs> for you. And then you didn't like swingers because you thought you were cooler than Vince Vaughn. These are revelations. You should pay now, me for this podcast. But now look how the tides have turned. Look how the tides have turned. You wish you, wished you could smell Vince Vaughn's farts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> well, not now. I mean, swingers Vince Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. Back Swinger then, Vince Vaughn. It would be bunny, baby. Yeah. <laughs> You're not allowed ever because <laughs> you didn't get it when it first came out. You missed it. <laughs> Oh, what are we man. fucking talking? Oh, Zach Braff. So he's back with another movie. Um, oh yeah, what's the name of this movie? Again? He did. He did a movie in 2014 called "Wish I Was Here." That was like an indie. I think when, I saw that. I when yeah. Indiegogo was big and like crowdfunding first really yeah. got big. That movie was famously crowdfunded. Um, and he's he does he's been directing a lot of TV since then. But again, nothing as big and not. I, he definitely did personal stuff because all his all his the Garden City "Wish I Was Here" and now. Um, it seems like I would guess that a good person is personal. So, you know, recreating that formula with Garden State in this new movie, I don't think that that's what he set out to do and good on him because you'll never be able to do that again. Yeah. Um, so the new movie stars Florence Pugh, which, you know, I absolutely adore. I think she's going to win an actor. She's going to win an actor someday. She's that's a SAG award. She's going to win a, an Oscar someday. She's fantastic in everything she's ever done. I don't think I've ever seen a movie where she hasn't been fantastic in it. So very excited to see what Zach, how Zach Braff's going to utilize her talents, and then Mr. Morgan Freeman. I would call him Sir Morgan Freeman because if we had knighthood in America, he would certainly be uh, a knight mm -hmm. for us. And uh, well, I guess we have the Medal of Freedom. Right. I'm assuming he has that. Yeah, yeah, he. Does. I'm sure he does. But they should come up with a title if you get the Medal of Freedom, like Sir or you know Dame over in England. Yeah, maybe we can lobby for it. <laughs> yeah, somebody's gonna listen to you. Maybe, yeah. Um <laughs> that that unfettered confidence will come in handy. So, a uh, good person follows Allison, whose life falls apart following her involvement in a fatal accident. 
Thank you, IMDb, for being the most vague website ever, as always. Yeah, there you go. I still don't know what the movie's about. I mean, I do. It's I about this young woman who's engaged to be married, and she goes for a drive with her, her future in-laws, and she has an accident and kills them. Did she poop or pee? Did she what? Never mind. Sorry. That was my No, explain joke. yourself. You can't bring up, you cannot bring up bodily functions you without said, mentioning ba- Babylon. Um, <laughs> you said, did she have an accident? And I said, poop or pee. Oh my. See, that, my mind isn't even that juvenile. That's, that's, <laughs> that's how that, wow. I could see that, that is just so sad. I couldn't even, I didn't even think about that. I should have said, was it number one or number two? I don't even know if I would have gotten if you said that. Grow up, you heathen. And I'm just imagining somebody had a fatal accident. My I, God, sorry. man. Sorry. Anyway. God, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. So, so, um, okay. so what happened? I, I know I'm laughing. <laughs> a good person is about this young woman who goes on a drive with her in-laws, and she has a fatal accident, and they die. And she wakes up years later, and she's addicted to drugs, and she did not get married. She's estranged from you know her, uh, her ex-fiance, and she starts up a relationship with the grandfather of her ex-fiance and and the people that she killed um it's a movie about addiction uh played beautifully by, by Flor- florence Pugh. here if you've seen a very traumatic addiction movie i know people you know see dope sick and uh the timothy chalamet movie comes uh, a good boy good boy comes to mind um has great portrayals of addiction especially pill addiction and this movie falls in line with great hard movies to watch about people that are really going through the opioid epidemic or just opioids in general and um, the crux of the movie the movie you you go see the movie for Florence Pugh's performance it's that damn good because she is always that damn good um would I have known Zach Brack direct Zach, Zach Brack Braff directed this if I didn't read it in the credits beforehand no uh, I don't think he necessarily has a style like the Garden State guy, okay. You know, right. I, there, there are. If I look for it, there are tenants of it, but I don't. I wouldn't consider his body of work stylistically standing out unless he had Coldplay on the album or something. <laughs> the soundtrack, right. but um, he definitely, he definitely could capture emotions very well and get great performances out of his actors. Really great casting in this movie. Everyone fit their part extremely well. It was a it's a very difficult movie to watch given the subject matter and and I really enjoyed it you know a movie that that it could have been very over the top and it could have been very lifetimey or after school special but I I don't you know just from just from reading the synopsis of it you know I had my trepidations but I'm happy to say that it did touch me and affect me in 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 a way where you know I think everybody's been touched by the opioid, opioid crisis mm-hmm. in some way or addiction in some way so um, I would encourage our listeners to go watch it. Can I say that one more time? I would encourage our listeners why, to go why, see it. Why? And no one else on this podcast. Why, would you, why are you excluding me, man? I'm sorry I made that joke. You know, but I think you'd be squirming in your seat probably 20 minutes in. And by 45 minutes in, you'd be doing the dishes. Um, and that that actually I'm saying that because that's disrespectful to the filmmakers because it's a pretty good movie yeah <laughs> but knowing you your attention span theater would be walking out no I I, I never I've only walked out of one movie man and uh, I you know I paid a good hard money that to, is to, to see this movie so I'm gonna sit through the whole thing it's an antiquated notion that you have only that you think you've only walked out of one movie given that streaming and home viewing <laughs> is so popular you have walked out of the living room the screening rooms you have i there's been 50 movies i could say you've walked out on well okay yeah whatever We're moving on moving on I'll, I'll hey, is that a hershey's one. kiss over there where the backyard <laughs> i'm gonna be out there for a while <laughs> i'm investigating <laughs> i'm the great be, mouse detective there may be more uh but yeah a good person was very um is very moving and damn florence pew hmm God, she's yeah. going, she's, she's, she's already places and she's going further places. She's going more places. Going to the moon, man. Uh, I think that's it for all the new movies I've seen, oh. but I have seen some really great movies. I mean, I saw one that you recommended to me. Uh, all right. And I guess do your worst. Um, enter the void. <laughs> <laughs> have you watched that? Yes, I have seen that. Okay, man. What the fuck? 
Um, yeah, I think that was the uh, the subtitle for that movie, or at least on the poster. I know, man. Holy shit, man. Yeah, Gaspar Noe or Gas Gaspar No. Um, I, I'm not sure how you pronounce yeah, that me name either. I had no idea what that movie was about going in. Um, it was famously uh, on Tarantino's recommendation list for years. I I did not know it was all shot in the POV style the first time I saw it. I didn't either. Whether you like that movie or not, you got to give it up for the style of that movie. Oh, for sure. So in the beginning, I was like, please continue, even if you can. <laughs> I was like, oh, this shot, this shot in first person. I'm like, I don't know about this. I really, you know, well, the title sequence, I was like, dude, I'm already tripping balls watching the title sequence. How did you you sit through this whole, it's like two, two hours and 35 minutes, isn't it? Two hours, uh, yeah, like two, yeah, something like a 241. Wow. Um, Fever dream in Tokyo or something. Yeah. And I mean, holy shit. I, I was kind of blown. I mean, it was like Terrence Malick meets Va- Lars Van Trier. Yeah, I, I would, you know, I would agree with that. It was definitely different than what I expected and. Yeah, it's not like a straight movie. It's not a movie that has an A, a B, and a C story. Um, it definitely feels more like it is has a European sensibility to it. And you, you just kind of have to go along for the ride. Right. And that's you just got to give up control. And the thing is, it's like, you know, it's that age-old question, what happens when we die, right? So to, to, uh, to explore or take a viewpoint or perspective of it, I mean, they're also doing DMT. I mean, I didn't the, really, that's not really a question that I asked after. I didn't, I did not, that, that's your takeaway. I, then I applaud that. I did, I didn't think that that was my takeaway. No, that's not, I mean, it's part of it, but it's not the main takeaway. It's just, you know, you looked up at the, how this individual got to this. And if so, being spot. dead, I, man, I don't want to die even more now. Well, I don't you're think just it's floating like this. and you're floating through everybody else's bullshit and you can't do anything about it. That would suck. I don't, I don't think, I mean, Hey, I watch my sister have sex now. Yeah. There, there was, there was a lot of, gr- uh, graphic. Yeah. Stuff in this. Very graphic nudity. I think there's even you know, sexuality that's... Uh, there's an abortion. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's right. That's this movie. Yeah. Well, it's also kind of like the precursor to Blonde. You know, right. I was thinking that the whole time I was watching Blonde and those scenes, I kept thinking, I wonder if they watched Enter the Void just to kind of figure out how to film this. Right. <laughs> you know, because there's no shame in doing that. I think we all do that as filmmakers, it, whether you want to admit it or not. You watch a ton of movies, you know, on the same subject just to get an idea of how do I do this? Right. And yeah. really, like, in a creepy way, if you're directing a movie and you're showing you know, the content about abortion and then you look at a movie like Blonde, it is weird that you go, man, I wonder how many movies he watched to get that right. <sighs> oh, I God. Even, I don't even want to know. Yeah. I mean, and that's... And that's why it's such a controversial scene in that movie, because the way it is filmed and portrayed, I can only imagine how controversial Into the Void was when it first came oh, out. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, but it got into Con, Sundance, South by Southwest. I mean, like... you, you got to give it to the filmmaker for just going somewhere and really having a vision and never letting his foot off the fucking accelerator on yeah. this one, even though, you know, it was kind of like at two miles an hour. <laughs> right. But I mean, here's the one thing, and uh, I'm not condoning or say I do, but like the movies, well, I'm that, not asking you to marry me, but <laughs> the movie, <laughs> the movie, you know, movies when they're talking about like, you know, an ex- trip experience or you being on drugs, like this movie, oh. it was one of the movies that kind of was like, oh, you God, got thank God. That could have went anywhere, and I'm glad that's where it went. <laughs> where, where do you think it was going? <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not getting in trouble. <laughs> okay, for sure. But, you know, like that, I was just like, wow, because, like, that's the thing. Like, it's funny. This came out in 2009, but I guess DMT is all the rage nowadays. So it's like, how would you know? 14. That? I, I do not know. I, I just think there's a lot of drugs that are all the rage nowadays, and uh, I have no idea about them because I'm not 20. Right, exactly. But, I, you know, I've heard the kids on the street talk about, <laughs> DMT, I guess I've seen or seen a, a news article. I snort a crab apple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck's that mean? <laughs> yeah. Gets you high, man. Um, um, I'm glad to know. I'm glad that you didn't hate it. I'm glad to know that you watched the whole thing. I actually gave it to you as another joke assignment, thinking that you would never make it through the whole thing. Well, look at look who's laughing now. I mean, there's not egg on my face. You fucking watched a movie. I, I don't care what movie it is. If you sat down and watched a movie, especially a movie over two hours, I've won. Well, you know what I thought? I was like, man, he recommended this movie to me. I took it seriously. He took it seriously. Now, 
fuck you, man. This I think the joke just to see if I do it. I think my exact words were watch Enter the Void. It's super fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. And, and then I then I screenshotted the IMDb page. And, and that's like, literally how I get you to watch movies. I just have to say it's something is super fucked up. Well, I you, I like psychological stuff, so you know it's like who knew who knew you like psychological stuff? I obviously obviously you don't. Know okay, you me. know what? Here's go watch Harold and Maude. You've you've mentioned you've recommended that movie okay, a few times. It's super fucked up. Is that the one about the boy and the uh, and the older lady? Yes, yeah. it's super fucked up, but it's so sweet and awesome. I gotta and watch Avatar now. So I, I, <laughs> that is, one's not fucked my up. List, my list is pretty full. <laughs> that is not fucked up. Avatar Way of Water. That's the one you have to watch. And, and that one too. Oh, God. But yeah, if you, I mean, if you want to be in a an elevated state of mind watching this, I would recommend that. Um, you know, it would help out with the movie. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about Ghost of Girlfriend's Past or? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about the movie. That, I, I did watch that, but I, we're not, I, we're I, not, wa- wa- we're I, not talking about I that. I saw part, part of it. I wanted to um, You didn't see any of it. A part. Um, I watched a movie called Il Sorpasso from 1962, and this is totally self-indulgent just for me, but it uh, was a change your life movie. It was uh, one of the inspirations for the movie Sideways, and you know how much I love that movie. Yeah, we watched that recently. But uh, it's an Italian movie directed by Dino Risi, and it is fantastic. It is so good. I ran out, and I had to buy the Criterion. Oh, my God. It And it's so simple. It is just about an, a, two Italian guys. One is like Mr. Everything, high energy, drives fast cars, you know, flirts with women, and and he's just Mr. Cool Guy, and he randomly stumbles upon Mr. Nerdy Guy, and they go on a a road trip for the day together, and hijinks ensue. Okay, cool. And it's so good, and because it's so simple, and the, the main actor, Vittorio Gassman, he is so, he's like Brando- magnetized on screen like you can't take your eyes off him because he just has that wow that guy is james dean that guy's the coolest guy i've ever seen in my life okay but in the greatest one of the greatest parts of the movie is he acts this big tough game but he's really kind of a loser and kind of a fuck up and doesn't really have an income and is not really good with women even though he likes to flirt with them and try with women and the nerdy guy, quote unquote, is actually like successful. And, you know, he's starting to get his law degree and, you know, he's trying to, he's just trying to come out of his shell to keep up with this guy, you know, and the effect that they have on each other is what the movie's all about. But it, I mean, if you close your eyes and I, you describe that movie, you basically are, it's, it's like Sideways, the original Sideways. All right. All right. I dig it. So if you like Sideways... You will like, nay, I say, love Il Sorpasso from 1962. That's all I'll say about it because I know you never watch it. And <laughs> it's just literally to get it down in the show notes that uh, I've seen this one and it kind of changed my life in a great way. And now I will review this movie for the rest of my life. All right. What else did you see? Um, well, this was a first time watch for me. Um, we watched uh, Good Night and Good Luck together. Oh, Okay. Glad I saw it. <laughs> David shit Theron. Listen, I love the movie, but I, I just took a deep breath to go, how big how big are you gonna bore me with your your review of this movie? You know, you know, <laughs> I just kept thinking, you know, um that line in, in the movie Ask God Alley, famous, famous movie. Um uh-huh. and directed it, by me. Yep. Yeah, uh, you know, the Edward Edward R. Murrow line. I'm like, I get it now. Oh my years later, God. later. I was like, Oh, that's that guy. Okay. Twenty years later, you finally got the you didn't even know Edward R. Murrow is until you watched Good Night and Good Luck. I, I, heard, I knew he was like a journalist, but I didn't know exactly oh, what, he, what he was. Oh dear Lord. I mean, full 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 disclosure. Let, let's just be honest with the people. You know? you know what? I wouldn't have. I would. I know that you don't have much general knowledge, but I mean, I do have general knowledge, man. What, what the fuck are you like talking about? Tying your shoes, wiping your ass. Yeah, but like <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> yeah, those, those are pretty important. Facts and like history knowledge and stuff. You know, who famous newscasters of all time. That's not something that I would put on the list of things I would think you know. So it hey, doesn't listen, shock me. Listen, we played Jeopardy not too long ago. I got no- general knowledge. I know stuff. Just because we play doesn't mean that you have knowledge. You lost every game. Well, one time it was just a, a, a clerical error in my math. <laughs> yeah, that's I, what you I said went. on your SATs. <laughs> it's a clerical error. I got 1180. Yeah. Um, yeah, so good night and good luck. It, it was, shocks me about that movie. 
is uh, I think it was Clooney's first outing as director, uh, or one of his first, if it wasn't the uh, the movie about the Gong Show guy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Oh, I um, love that movie. Um, they're remaking it, by the way. What? Uh huh. Without oh. without him, it's just totally new people doing it. Get the fuck out. But um, good night and good luck. It's shocks shocking to me that I I saw that in theaters and oh my god, it just blew me away. It was so fucking good. I love movies about that period. Um, I think it's so important to keep spreading the word that there was this witch hunt in Hollywood and all over America, you know, to out the commies and, you know, they really just ruin people's lives. And it's so fucked up that the government can come in there and do that. And, you know, the movie is so fantastic. And what's weird is I probably have seen it five times and every single time the credits roll, I went, wait a second, there's, I thought there was more. Right. I, I literally was like, it, it felt, it always feels so short to me, like, that's it? That That's the whole story? And, and not in a bad way. It's just I always think that it's going to keep going on. Mm-hmm. It's so it's such a weird movie, what I expect it's going to be. But it's just a very concise get in, get out, tell this kind of, you know, dust up with uh, with Senator, Senator McCarthy and Edward, Edward R. Murrow at the time through newscasts. And you don't even they didn't even cast McCarthy in it, which I thought was really awesome. Yeah. They just used footage of him, you know, kind of res- real footage of him responding to the movie. And it's it's brilliantly done. Brilliant black and white. Um, great performances. You know, writer, director. I think uh, Grant Haslov and Clooney did that yeah. script, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have nothing to say on the matter. I mean, I I, <laughs> I, I watched it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I, lear- sure. I learned me something. You know, I I, I enjoy one, one of these talking. Yeah, but you're movies. not into political movies. Like, I doubt you've ever seen all the pres- president's men. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean journalism movies. I mean the the most recent one, maybe like the Post. I, I doubt Spotlight, you've seen that one. The Post. I watched the Post. The, well, you got you got to take you got to what we have a podcast, so I have to have to stay up to date with the with the happenings. I'll tell you what. I rewatched the Post this past year, and by the end of that one, I was howling. I was cheering by the end of it. I was. I just think it's it's a brilliantly underrated movie for that year. I think it was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, that year, but I kept thinking, why would why was this? It's good, but it's not great. Now that I I misjudged that movie. That's a great movie. Yeah, Spielberg, man, it's fantastic. Um, and I'm I'm a sucker for a great journalism movie. You said Spotlight. I mean, they're famous. They won Best Picture that year. Um, I don't think you can say political movie without saying All the President's Men is the best political movie of all time, especially the best movie about journalism. Yeah, best political movie of all time is My Fellow Americans. <laughs> 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 Hands down. Um, you know what? It's on my top ten. It's on my top ten. You know that, that yeah, fuck everybody <laughs> because that movie. It's, it's not only amazing, but you believe those are the presidents. God damn it! Yeah, they, you do. Right. I, I hope that's how they act sometimes. somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Clooney does a great political movie. I mean, one of my favorite political movies, also on my top ten list, is uh, The Ides of March. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. Again, <sighs> fucking Christ. Um, but again, a movie that gets to the end and I go, wait, that's it? God damn, that was powerful for an hour and 35 minutes or whatever it was. It's short, but it packs a serious punch and Clooney knows what he's doing. He doesn't waste your time as a director. And I really appreciate that because in the world of three hour movies that, you know, these, these big highfalutin directors have the, uh, the checks to cash too, you know, they're, they're not wasting our time, but they certainly don't care if they are. Yeah. yeah. And a director that goes in and knows his job and gets in and out, doesn't stay around to bore an audience, I am all for that. All right. Yeah, me too. But, you know, like Tarantino's next movie, if it's not four hours, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it's his last one. Just, Come on. Maybe, maybe. It's going to be like the the Motley Crue contractually obligated to never tour again thing. Yeah. And then last, last film. But then like four years later, they ripped up, they, they had a PR thing and they ripped up the contracts. They were like, kidding, we're going on tour. <laughs> it's amazing. Huh? Amazing how the world works. I think it's bullshit, man. Yeah. I think it's bullshit. It's awesome that they do, they would do that. It's bullshit that their fans fall for shit like that. Yeah. It's a cash grab. <laughs> yeah. We, you, you were saying it like, I would totally do that. Oh man. Yeah, man. If I was in Motley I can't crew. wait to retire a million times. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just keep coming out of retirement. <laughs> the once will do Andy. Maybe twice. Uh, um, Anything else I really want to talk about? I mean, I, I started back for the John Wick movies. If you want to get in an argument again, no, 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 no. We, we, I want to. I want to watch the new ones. So I think I want to put it on record that uh, during John Wick Chapter Two, 
I was trying to figure out a plot detail that I missed, and I'm trying to figure it out, and I'm talking oh, to get you. The fuck out of here. I'm trying to figure it out, and I'm trying to figure it out with you, and I'm talking to you, and you have seen the movie before, also. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's let's just preface it with that. You know, or you should have known what I was asking you, but you didn't remember, and it was crucial to the plot. We I had missed something. It wasn't that crucial. You get had also you had also missed something, and you whipped out your phone and looked up what happens in the plot of John Wick Chapter Two, and you told me. And totally ruined the movie ruin for me. The, it's not even that major of a plot. Totally plot point. ruined the movie for me. I could have whipped out my phone and looked it up, Magellan. It was like something was it was a sister or something. It like was that. ridiculous. Who who does that to somebody that's watching a movie they've never seen? You go, oh, I know what happens, and you read it out loud to the person. We're not talking faux but it pas. Happened. It already happened. Though. We're talking fuck you. <sighs> Talk about movie. We used to do movie theater etiquette on this podcast. Remember? Yeah, yeah, a long well, time ago. Well, yeah, well, you, we stopped doing it because you have none, and you still prove it to this bullshit. day. Cinderella. You if you were Cinderella, you wouldn't be invited to the ball, even if you looked like that. Yeah. They know. No, no shave your mustache. The, I'll, my fairy godmother would get me there somehow. <sighs> God, um, but yeah, I'm I'm rewatching all the John Wicks. I want to see I'm, the new one. I've seen the first one a couple times, um, and so I'm I'm working my way up to chapter four. And uh, they're very fun. They're fun movies, like everybody told me. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, that was great. I, I appreciate that. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's pretty much it for me. Oh, no. My recommendation for you, uh, real quick. The Vanishing from 1988. The Vanishing. This is a movie that I think you will really dig. It, it might be one of the best psychological thrillers of all time. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking. Uh, you don't have to look, just take my word for it. I like looking it. at the poster when you talk about the movie. It okay. helps out. 1988, directed by George Sluzer. Um, It's about this young couple that go on, they're going on vacation, and they stop at this uh, service station on the border of, uh, I can't remember, but the, the border of France, for one of the other countries. And the girlfriend goes in to buy something, and she never comes back. Ooh. And the guy is is like, what the hell happened? And we've all been in that situation. That's why it's so scary. Right. You know, what? Ha where, where is this person? And, you know, usually they show back up and you go, what the hell happened? You're like, oh, I was in the bathroom for a long time. But she doesn't come back. Three years later. Three geez, years. Three years later, we catch up to, they tell you who the person is that abducted her. Oh. And that's where the movie starts. The first 25 minutes are the setup. Oh my God, she doesn't come back. Then you cut to three years later and you start with her abductor. And you start unraveling the story of what actually happened, how he did it, you know, what could possibly be have happened to her. And then the boyfriend is still looking for her. And then their paths meet up. And it's it's thrilling. It's shocking because of the way it's told. I've never seen a thriller done quite so amazing before i mean like kind of like insomnia oh i love that movie. you know kind of like know. that but the original you should watch the original one with uh stellan skarsgård because the original insomnia is is better oh wow okay um but in that great way where they the this director in the vanishing plays with time and also you don't you don't show who the who the person who the you know the antagonist is in this situation until the end usually Right. You got to figure out who it is, but they give it to you right away. And then they show you how he did it. And then you're going, oh my God, how are they going to maintain this that we know what's going on? And not only do they maintain it, they keep up in the ante on you going, what is going to happen here? This is so messed up. He's toying with this poor guy. Hmm. It's so good. This, this sounds really interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's really so good. I mean, I, again, run right out. By the criterion of it, it's one of it's one of my favorite psychological throws of all time. It you know I've got to see it three or four more times. When I was done, I wanted to watch it again. That's how wow. good it was. That that's that's a huge recommendation because if you can watch a movie and then be like, I could put it back on again. That's, yeah, that speaks volumes. It's really really great. Uh, nice. That's my recommendation for you for the week. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's there's something if, if you say you like psychological thrillers, this one's for you. All right. 
The Vanishings, 1988. Because I looked at it, there was a 2018 one, but that looks like a shit movie with Gerard Butler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Side note, if you're, this this is a different one. Mm, we're fine. I've recommended so much this week. I saw some really great movies, and um, I'm glad to be back with you. I'm, I'm tearing up. The man. audience. The audience of this oh, podcast. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Um, there, there's that. But uh, thank you for your... Rec- what There was a movie you recommended to me this week, or no? I recommended it to you. No, you reckon... Well, uh, the one I was going to, you already saw. Okay, good. I'm, I'm very glad you, I don't have any homework from you because I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, now I'm not going to do it because now you just give me bullshit assignments. No, I like your, your Into the Void. Uh, but I like knowing that somewhere out there, Andy Pesha has seen a movie like Enter the Void and lived to tell the tale. That's right, man. I, there's, there's tons. I've seen that. Man, it's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that's then, you at a party. Yeah, you, you could go. be talking to Gaspar. No, <laughs> that's what you would say. <laughs> hey, do, you know what? We go grab a beer and hey, talk man, about some more. That was fucked up. You got any other notes? It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed. It. All right, um, you got anything else to say? Nah, I'm good. Would be the first time. You know, I feel I, I, it was a fun. It's fun getting back to it, and we will. Well, we yeah, we should. We should have probably done this on the beginning of the episode, but now I guess we're going to release the episode on Fridays. Oh yeah, so yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we're moving our release date, so uh, it's gonna be every Friday instead of Tuesdays now. So uh, check out wherever you get your podcast and um, look for it on Fridays instead of Tuesdays. Four seasons of film. Thank you, Andy Pesha. All the social media. <laughs> <laughs> all the all the things. Yeah, check out all all, all of his content, everything he posts, because he's brilliant at it. No, I'm I'm, I'm elusive. I'm like uh, I'm like uh, what's his name? Daniel Day Lewis. He's elusive. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. He, he fucking of, retired. Stays out of. Yeah, he's gonna come back out of retirement. He's not elusive. He retired. But even whack when he was in his prime, he didn't. You know, he, he stayed stayed behind. The curtain, oh boy. The shadows. Okay, we're gonna end it there. I'm um, Daniel Day Lewis. Damn it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you do have a large acting resume. So. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you do have a large ass. <laughs> well, like, that, that wouldn't have been the compliment that I think you would have wanted me to say, yeah, male. The uh, uh, well, thanks, man. Now you're blushing. Okay. Goodbye. Um, keep film alive and we'll see you next week for another Four Seasons Film Podcast.